Hello my fellow readers. Today I'm going to talk about, uh, I, I can't remember, is this Lychee Light Club? I can't remember how to say the fruit. Anyway, by Usamaru Furuya. Um, <laughs> this, uh, this is a very disturbing story. Be prepared right out the bat. I'm going to say this. This is highly violent, highly gruesome, um, very graphic. Um, so not for the faint of heart, uh, not for very young people. Um, yeah. So if you're a parent, don't give it to like your 11 year old, but, <laughs> but if you can handle very graphic, gruesome, violent things, uh, you can give this one a try. Uh, I'm trying to think if I want to just read the background here. I'll just talk about essentially that this, this book essentially is the story of a group of friends that started this club in like this I, I think it's abandoned, like this abandoned kind of warehouse zone. Uh, and it started off really uh, simple. You know, it was just a group of friends. They're hanging out after school and, you know, hey, we found this cool place where, you know, we can just hang out. And that's all they did. And I think they would just play games. You know, actually, they were kind of nerdy in, in the games and stuff they wanted to play. Uh, then one day, I, th I think he was a new student. Um, uh, comes to town and then <laughs> if he wasn't a new student he was new to the group like he follows them or something whichever uh comes in and gets taken into the group and um things are fine for a while and then i don't remember how or why but but they end up getting like these fortunes told I can't remember if there's like a fair in town or something. I don't remember. But uh, the the newcomer uh, gets a fortune that kind of uh, predicts his doom. And so he becomes obsessed with finding a way to stop this from happening. And as we know from, you know, the dawn of time stories like this, and certainly many Shakespearean stories like this, uh, there's not really a way to do that. And uh, in many ways, you can end up bringing about those events by you're trying to prevent those events. And I, I think, let's go back to Greek times, because really, if you look at uh, Oedipus Rex, um, that's a similar situation where if you try to prevent your future from happening, you might, in fact, be making it happen. And sometimes even worse things happen. Um, and that really is the big story of what happens here. Um, and it, it just spins into this tale of kind of uh, really gruesome, violent acts and murder and all of this stuff. Um, and also brings in kind of Frankenstein-esque things as well, because they try to create this robot creature that's also um, has kind of human intelligence. So there's, there's a lot going on here. <laughs> no, like, I also don't want to spoil anything, but there is, there's a lot. And the creature, again, goes back to trying to prevent this destiny that he believes he's going to have. And there's all of these, I don't, you see like a, a mental breakdown happening where he sees a lot of things as a threat to him and his rule and his life. Um, and so he starts to do not so good things in order to retain that control. Um, yeah, there, there's a lot, a lot of disturbing scenes that almost could have made me stop reading. But at the same time, I wanted to keep reading in order to see the resolution. <laughs> And uh, this is another story where, like, through the whole thing, you're hoping for uh, a hero, um, you know, that can put an end to this craziness because it was crazy um, what they would do and how that was all playing out. Um, 
and, and so yeah it does keep you reading because you want to see well how can this possibly end and also how deep i guess will the tragedy go like how how will anybody survive this catastrophe um yeah, this is intense. There's, you, you can't, or at least I can't talk too much about it without like spoiling a bunch of things that happen. And a bunch of things happen. And it's, this is a pretty, I don't know if this is a two in one volume, but this is a very, it's a long story. It's over 300 pages. So it's, I guess maybe not as long as a double volume, but not as short as a normal single volume so it's like maybe one and a half um i just look at that creepy face yeah that whole part too gets gets explained like why the club is named that and the whole mission like everything everything makes sense by the end it's just a very disturbing and dark tale uh yeah very dark very graphic uh, I don't think this is one for everybody. I think that you have to be prepared um, for what you're going to get into here. Uh, definitely not for the faint of heart. It's definitely going to stick with you, whether for good or bad. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. There, there is part of me that feels like this is an intentional kind of social commentary you know as i was explaining some of the things that occur in it you know i was thinking about that and i i do think it's semi-blatant social commentary um and what can happen with leaders and their rule and especially as they try to hold on to said rule with an iron fist uh, the tragedies that that leads to. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I definitely, again, not for the faint of heart, but I would recommend this. Uh, I'll, I'll read the back quickly just in case this helps settle anything. Uh, one, they have a little quote here which comes in from the Frankenstein-esque character that is... I am human, it is in my programming, which I think is just, that's, like, think of that. I'm human, it is in my programming. Anyway, for the city industrial towns lads, there's only one point of light, the light club, a secret brotherhood they've organized in an abandoned factory. They're on the verge of booting up their crowning achievement, a thinking machine fueled by lychee fruits. At the same time, the middle schoolers cootie, oh, that's the other thing, they're in middle school. Which, I mean, I know in Japan that can go to like the age of 15, but I don't think, I don't even remember if they're third years. They might be younger than 15. Um, okay. At the same time, the middle schoolers' cooties fearing solidarity is devolving into a downright national socialistic, no, national socialist muck of murderous paranoia, perverse aestheticism, and not always suppressed homosexuality. Uh, cult favorite Usamaru Furuya's most flawlessly realized work to date. Here is Lord of the Flies for our new century. A text, however, that will be will, will never be assigned in schools, which is true. Um, so, again, be prepared if you go into this. Because also, if you know Lord of the Flies, you know how dark that is. And Yeah, it's dark. Um, that's it. <laughs> that is it for this video. Until next time, bye.